Hi guys and welcome to this investigation where we're going to be looking at how you can work out the empirical formula of magnesium oxide with a chemical reaction. Your first step is you need to heat a crucible until it's red hot and then leave it on one side to cool. By doing this you're cleaning it to make sure that there are no impurities when you start the actual experiment. The second step then is you need to weigh a crucible and lid and put it on one side and then weigh your strips of magnesium and then record the mass of both of them. For step three then you need to heat the crucible with the magnesium in. You need to make sure the lid's on and you need to leave the lid on. This makes sure that no solid can escape and very occasionally you need to remove the lid just slightly so that you can replenish the oxygen so that as much oxygen can get to the magnesium as possible so it's fully reacted to make our magnesium oxide. Step 4 then, you need to keep on heating until all of the magnesium has turned white. When it's all white and no longer glowing you know that you've made your magnesium oxide and you can turn your Bunsen burner off and leave it to cool. Step 5 is to re-weigh your crucible with your magnesium oxide in. So work that out, we had it came out to 13.38, you can then take that away from your original mass which is 13.23 which shows I've got 0.15 grams of my magnesium oxide. Okay, now I have my raw data then, I had 0.09 grams of magnesium, my crucible weighed 13.23 grams, my crucible with my magnesium oxide weighed 13.38, so from that I can work out the mass of oxygen that I had. So if my magnesium weighed 0.09 grams and the difference between the crucible and the crucible with magnesium oxide is 0.15 grams, thus my weight of my magnesium oxide, all I need to do is take the two numbers away which leaves me with 0.06 grams of oxygen. The next step is to do the calculation. So I'll put a link in the bottom right hand corner if you can't remember how to do that. The first thing you do is you write down the masses which we've already done, then you write down the atomic masses which you'll be given in an exam, and then you divide them by each other. So 0.09 divided by 24 is 0.00375 and 0.06 divided by 16 is also 0.00375. Step four then, you need to take the smallest number, which doesn't matter in this case because they're both the same, and divide them by that. So dividing both by 0 0.00375 gives me a ratio of 1 to 1, which means I have 1 magnesium, 1 oxygen, so my formula is MgO. Let's move on to the apply section then, which is describe step by step how to experimentally find out the empirical formula of magnesium oxide. And 16 grams of oxygen reacts with 24 grams of magnesium to form magnesium oxide. This is a six marker, there are loads of things you can put down just from watching the video, hopefully you'll be able to pick up most of them. Pause the video, have a go, and we'll see how you've done them in. Right, let's see how you've done then. So as I said before, there are loads of ways you could have got the marks, so we'll start off. The first thing to do is to heat the crucible strongly and let it cool so you can clean it. The second one is to weigh the crucible and lid beforehand, then weigh the magnesium ribbon, then heat the magnesium strongly until completely white, it should be inside the crucible, keep the lid on during heating to stop the solid from escaping, remove the lid slightly to replenish the oxygen, once it's reacted leave it to cool, re-weigh the crucible, the oxide of magnesium and the lid and then subtract the mass of the crucible and the lid to find out the magnesium oxide mass. So that's the experimental part, now onto the calculations. By saying 24 grams divided by the AR which is 24 is 1, you could get 1 mark. 16 by 16 for the oxygen gives you 1 mark which gives you a ratio of 1 to 1 and the formula of MgO. So loads of different ways you could have got the mark there, 12 different marking points, hopefully you got a few of them. And that pretty much ends this video. We'll move on to the review question, which is very similar. This is describe step by step how to experimentally find out the empirical formula of sodium oxide. So you're thinking the same type of method that we've just been through. 
and you should also include how to calculate the empirical formula in this calculation. And that ends this video. Hi guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, click the subscribe button down below and visit the website mrbarnstc.com for more.